Heiai is an ugly loner who spends his life in misery, until one day, he decides to steal and eat a chocolate, not knowing that it is actually a magical chocolate. Suddenly, he finds himself unexpectedly becoming a father, having two other girlfriends and a creep childhood friend, all desperately wanting him for themselves. Heiai, being an average high school student, doesn't have anything going on for him. During one of his classes, a beautiful girl walks in and goes straight to the loner sitting at the back. As soon as she tells him that they will be having a baby, everyone loses their mind. The whole class starts taking pictures to expose this creep while Heiai is still confused as to what is even going on. He manages to shake off the boys from his class but the desperate nerds from all over the high school are after him as well. However, he soon gets dragged into the women's toilet and is beaten by a muscular girl who claims to be his girlfriend. As soon as the poor boy gets out, another girl comes running and clings to him. This time she tells him to come home as his kids are waiting for him. The muscular girl and the new girl start fighting, giving him the opportunity to make an escape. Heiai gets beaten and follows all around the high school until he finally reaches the rooftop where Zidong, the first girl is waiting for him. However, everyone else follows him as well, including the muscular girl Xuan, and the one with kids, Yuan. He causes a commotion on the rooftop as the whole high school is gathered there. They ask him to explain his actions. Ai, having no idea what is going on tells everyone that he is clueless as to who these girls are. He makes a wimpy decision and threatens them to back off with their accusations or he will jump off the rooftop. No one cares about the pathetic boy, and they still try to follow him, ultimately making him let go and fall from the top. While he's still mid-air, a light beam falls from the sky and pauses the time. Another cute girl, Tata arrives and asks him if he is the one who ate the Cupid chocolate. Suddenly, he remembers a cake on the rooftop that he ate. Tata informs him that it is no ordinary cake and if someone were to eat it, they develop false love memories. And if some girl eats the same chocolate as well, they start to think of the boy as their lover. Unfortunately, for him, the same cake went to a club room where several girls took a bite of it. Tata is apparently a love god. She congratulates him for having several girls run after him. However, he thinks otherwise. It's hard for him to run from the desperate loners in high school, and he could get expelled too. Before leaving, Tata informs him that the magic can be lifted if he can fulfill their most desired wish. Heiai is still worried about Zidong and runs to the rooftop again in order to meet up. The next day, he takes her to a hospital where he gets stared at by the old ladies. The doctor soon arrives and gives him the results. According to the report, they are not having a baby anytime soon. Afterward, Heiai goes to Zidong's house, which is bigger than his whole neighborhood. Multiple bodyguards welcomed her arrival back home. Just as her assistant is informing Heiai about Zidong's dad's neglectfulness, a guard comes running. He tells the assistant about everything that happened at high school. Little bro tries to sneak away but is caught immediately. All the guards start beating him until Zidong arrives and informs everyone about the love they share. This makes the guard even more furious and poor Heiai gets beaten to a pulp by a bunch of muscular men in suits. Fortunately, Zidong saves him by taking Heiai to her room. The guards try to break the door while Heiai takes this opportunity to riz the girl up. While he is locked inside the room, he observes that Zidong even has last year's calendar in her room with the days she met her dad marked. The weakling gets pissed off and leaves the room. He snatches the assistant's mobile and tells her dad that if he isn't a coward, then come meet him face to face. The assistant loses her mind while the guards start to respect him. Soon after his phone call with her dad, a bunch of cars and helicopters arrive at Zidong's house. Among these cars, a Rolls Royce stops in front of the gate and her father steps out. Even her dad admits that the loser has some courage. Afterward, he orders his guard to give him a beating. Zidong once again saves him by showing her father the report from the hospital. Zidong's dad asks the reason he lied and calls him here. Heiai tells her dad that he hadn't lied, there was no chance that he would come and meet up with his daughter. Heiai confronts him for not giving Zidong time and always being busy with work. After showing her dad the calendar Zidong was hiding in her room, he is finally able to convince him to give his family more time. After he is done appearing cool in front of her family, he makes a run for it. After a while, Zidong meets up with him and shows gratitude for everything he did. With his, Zidong's wish was complete, and the magic was lifted. The next day, Zidong still comes up to him and plans a date. Heiai gets confused and questions Tata about it. 
The love god tells him that even though the magic is lifted, she has developed new and pure feelings towards the loner. Soon after, the class door breaks and a samurai girl arrives. Her dark aura makes Heiai piss his pants. Zuli questions their relationship and later get in some Riz acts, which Heiai really enjoys. As soon as they are done, Zuli's mom arrives and confronts Zuli for coming here from America. Zuli rejects the offer to go back to America, which results in a daughter-mom fight. Her mom defeats her with a single hit and leaves afterward. Heiai is telling Tata about Zuli and that she is his childhood friend. Zidong tries to eavesdrop and gets caught instantly. Zidong is hesitant to ask him about their date tomorrow after watching him do questionable acts with another girl. However, Heiai comforts her and tells her that he is all for tomorrow and he'll be there no matter what. Later that day, Heiai is still at his high school and runs into Kshuen on the staircase. The first thing the muscular girl does is slap the living hell out of him and leave after telling him to break up. Heiai doesn't take this slap lightly. He confronts her and tells her that no one will ever like a girl with such an attitude. This breaks up and makes him wonder what happens to the magic on them if the girl breaks up. Tata reinsures him and tells him that a breakup call is always a warning from the girl. Shuen takes her anger out on the high school boys by making them do 1,000 push-ups. She starts spraying water on them as soon as they stop. Heiai saw this and tried to stop her but ended up drenching her in water. She runs away without beating his brains out. While taking a shower, she makes up her mind to end everything she has with that loser. The next day, Heiai wakes up and finds Zuli sitting on his bed. He tries to leave and tells her that he needs to go out and buy a reference book, trying his best not to let Zuli know about his date with Zidong. She locks him inside his room and leaves to buy the reference book herself. Heiai does the only reasonable thing left. He climbs to his neighbor's balcony, scaring the little girl present for life. Heiai finally leaves his home and arrives at the meetup spot where Zidong is already present. The first place they visit is a cafe and while Heiai is enjoying his drink, Zidong is nervous as to what couples do on a date. Seeing her face red awakens the Riz in Heiai and he gets too close to her, making both of them nervous and a little uncomfortable. Heiai notices an anime festival and asks Zidong if she wants to visit. She agrees and both of them enter the anime festival. On the other hand, Zuli comes back home and is furious after finding out that Heiai has escaped. A lot of girls doing cosplay are present at the festival, comparing their popularity with others. However, as soon as Zidong arrives, all the boys start looking at her. Zidong tried to hold Heiai's hand but couldn't. Heiai, even though he noticed her attempt is still too much of a loser to do it himself. Soon after, they notice a huge crowd gathering around someone. After going a little closer, Heiai notices a cat girl performing for the crowd and surprisingly, it is no one else but the muscular girl Xuan. Xuan thinks that Heiai came to make fun of her and starts confronting him. Suddenly, Xuan notices that her high school friends are here as well. She takes Heiai and Zidong into the dressing room to hide from her friends. Meanwhile, Zuli has also arrived at the anime festival. Afterward, Heiai makes fun of Xuan for liking cat girls even though she acts so tough around others. Xuan tells Heiai that she doesn't like hiding her interests, but doesn't have any other choice. She further tells him that a lot of freshman girls were bullied by the boys due to their appearance. Until one day Xuan saved them from the bullies by beating the crap out of them. From that day onwards, all these girls are her friends and follow her. Shuen doesn't want to ruin her image in their minds by appearing as a cosplayer. Soon after, the competition starts, and Shuen tells them that she needs two more people in order to join the competition. Zidong suggests she and Heiai be her partners. Shuen takes Heiai inside the dressing room and dresses him like a bunny girl. Zuli realizes that the pathetic loser is even into cross-dressing but somehow likes that side of him as well. Later, they realize that someone who wants Shuen to fail has ripped her dress for cosplay. Shuen couldn't handle reality and ran outside, abandoning her cosplaying plans. Heiai tells Zidong that even if she left, he still needs to show the world his bunny girl outfit. While he's pissing in the washroom, Tata gives him a visit and a sudden idea makes Heiai stare at Tata's body, making her uncomfortable. After coming up with a plan, it is finally his time to shine on the stage. His name is called and Heiai falls on the stage as soon as he walks out, embarrassing himself in front of a whole crowd. However, he is able to redeem himself by doing some cringe-worthy actions. The fans started hyping him up a little, however, this is just the start. He still needs much more support if he wants to win the overall competition. Meanwhile, Tata and Zidong are running around, finding Shuin. Having no other idea in his mind, Heiai starts singing in a girl's voice. While some people are satisfied after listening to him, the down bad fans still want Shuin to appear. Shuen is standing above the stage, watching her so-called boyfriend embarrass himself. 
Hayao stops his act after the quantity of down bad fans starts to increase. Instead, he starts telling the fans that he is impressed by how hard Chuen works to keep her interests separate from her daily life and tries calling her out. Meanwhile, Chuen who is standing above him accidentally falls. Everyone notices Chuen falling from the top but as she is about to hit the floor, Tata uses her magic to change the costumes of both Hayai and Chuen. Hayai turns into a vampire while Chuen turns into a princess. This cool transformation excites the fans and makes them wonder how much a production like this must have cost. The reaction of the fans made it clear that these two were the winners of the competition. Zuli saw everything that happened and is pissed at Chuen for pulling such stunts on his boy. Hayai shamelessly walks inside the girls' changing room with Chuen. As his clothes are inside the changing room, he requests Xuan to let him go first but she declines. During their argument, the clothes they are wearing suddenly disappear. At that particular time, Hayai became an adult. After getting slapped in the face, he is kicked out of the dressing room. Tata gives him a visit and he starts to confront Tata for making their clothes disappear. Tata sees Hayai's little Excalibur for the first time and calls him a degenerate. However, later she apologizes for the mistake as she is not very good at controlling magic. Nevertheless, Hayai still thanks her for the help. Zidong soon arrives and after informing Xuan, he leaves alongside Zidong. As soon as they go outside, Hayai ditches Zidong and tells her to go home alone while he waits for the muscular girl to arrive. He waits for Xuan until she arrives and without a second thought, invites her to spend a night at his house. Xuan's face becomes as red as a tomato, and she runs away after slapping the loser on his face. This, however, confirms that the magic has left considering her wish is fulfilled. Hayai is still not satisfied with the fact that Xuan hides her interest from others. At night, Hayai visits an apartment where a hot lady lives, and she invites him inside. Turns out the hot lady isn't a stranger but one of Hayai's teachers. Hayai tries to act shy after seeing her in a revealing dress, but his heart is jumping from excitement. Her whole house is dirty and a complete mess. Afterward, she asks the reason Hayai visited her at night. Her mentioning of Zuli makes Hayai think about the time of his childhood. When they both were little, Hayai always used to get better grades than Zuli. Even after motivating her to do better and helping in any way possible, she still couldn't beat Hayai. In the end, the loner decided to get lower grades than Zuli on purpose to make her happy. However, in middle school, Zuli challenges Hayai, telling him that he has to come to America with her if he gets lower grades. Hayai gets his act together and ends up scoring the best grade. Zuli leaves crying after realizing that he doesn't want to visit America with her. Hayai visited his teacher to let her know that he would be needing her help in the upcoming exams. His teacher ends up getting drunk and passing out. The next day, the boys at the gym thought that Xuan had stopped being the scary torturing girl she used to be. But they couldn't have been more wrong. She emerges from thin air and makes them do an overhead press while she tickles their underarms. Suddenly, Hayai appears and asks for Xuan. She tries to take him outside to talk in privacy, but the loser wants to talk in front of the other girls. He challenges all the girls of Xuan's club to a competition. The rules of the competition were that the girls could win if they scored better than Hayai in the upcoming test. However, that's not all, the girls can still win if Hayai doesn't rank first in the overall high school results. Xuan and the girls accepted and from that day forward, Hayai indulged himself in studies. He started studying the whole day every day, slowly transforming into a nerd. The news of him challenging Xuan and the others spread among other students as well. Xuan, however, had no idea why Hayai was doing something like this. At night, Hayai is busy studying when he notices Zuli standing below a tree while it's raining. He runs to her with an umbrella in hand and notices that Zuli is crying. She starts to cry even harder and asks Hayai if she is disappointed. Hayai comforts her and tells her otherwise. He uses this perfect opportunity to hug a girl for the first time in his miserable life. It's the day of the test. Hayai seems tired after studying all night like a nerd. As he is about to enter the high school building, Xuan and her friends start mocking him. However, he ignores them and goes straight to the examination hall. During the test, he is the first one to finish and take his leave. After the test, Xuan tried to talk to him, but couldn't as Zidong snatched him for herself. He seems to have liked how cross-dressing felt and asks Zidong to help him choose a dress. Several days later, it is time for the test results to be revealed. Xuan's friends are not worried in the least and are confident that the playboy can't beat them. Later, Hayai visits the girls in the gym and tells Xuan that she needs to wear a maid outfit if Hayai wins the bet. Afterward, the test results arrived and one of Xuan's friends ranked fifth. 
However, Heiai isn't worried as he ranked first, beating all the muscular girls and winning the best. Everyone is surprised and now Xuan has to wear a maid costume for two weeks. Xuan's friends try going to the teacher in order to make him recheck the results, but he declines as the results are perfectly correct. The next day, Xuan arrives at high school wearing a maid costume. Every cultured guy is head over heels for her. At the rooftop, Heiai is having a conversation with Totter regarding how he's trying to help Xuan reveal her interests without facing any problems. Zidong arrives and is confused seeing the nerd talking to himself. Later, Xuan also arrives and throws the dress Heiai got her. She tells him that the size was too small for her and her talents couldn't fit inside. He apologizes and Xuan forgives him instantly and leaves after calling him degenerate. Later, he is walking in the hallway with Tata. She thought that Zuli is her girlfriend, but he corrects her by saying that it's a thing of the past and now he's all but a loner. Suddenly, two kids come running and crash into Heiai. Yuan also arrives and turns out that these are apparently his kids. After finding out that these are his kids, Heiai's spirit almost leaves his body. Yuan introduces the kids as Hong and Ming. Heiai loses his cool and starts shouting at her in front of the kids. The kids get a little scared, but he comforts them and tells them to call him Uncle Heiai when they are outside. Later, Tata informs him about how magic works and if they are in the Cupid contract. The person's wishes start coming true little by little. It is Heiai's duty to fulfill their one main wish or things might start getting out of hand. Yuan along with the kids are waiting outside. She gets a call and has to leave. Yuan tells the kids to behave and wait for her but being the kids of a loser, they go off to explore the high school. Yuan realizes that the kids are lost and informs Heiai. They both start to look around the high school for them. Zidong runs into Hong and promises to help her find her so-called uncle. On the other hand, Ming is a complete menace and is running around the campus causing ruckus. He visits the chemistry lab, and the disturbance causes a blast. He leaves, imagining himself as a hero. Heiai asks for help from the other students, and someone informs him that Ming went to the gymnasium. Heiai realizes that Ming truly is his son after he sneaks into the girls' changing room. Heiai goes after him and tries to find him by peeking into the changing room. Unfortunately, he is stopped by Xuan for peeping. Ming tries to save him but stumbles, ultimately causing Xuan's dress to fall off. On the other hand, Zidong realizes that Heiai is Hong's uncle and uses this chance to get closer to that geek. After receiving a beating from all the Xuan's muscle head friends, he takes the kids back to Yuan. The kids are happy to see their mom. Yuan tries to give him a shoulder massage as a thank you but the cultured boy declines. He finds out that the magic doesn't even make sense as Yuan is currently 20 years old, and both the kids are 12. Heiai definitely knows that he wasn't that brave as a 7-year-old. Afterward, Yuan asks Heiai to visit her home and he makes the terrible decision to accompany her. As soon as they reach Yuan's home, a kitchen knife comes flying out and her scary mom reveals herself. Yuan's mom scolds the loser for not coming home for the past few days. She threatens him with a kitchen knife to call her mother but calms down when Yuan reminds her of the kids. As soon as Heiai enters the house, he realizes that they may not be a high-income household. On the other hand, Zidong decides to ask Heiai on an amusement park date this Sunday. At Yuan's home, even the kids tease Heiai for acting like a coward in front of girls. Later, Yuan tells the kids that they should go to bed already and starts taking off her clothes. Heiai panics and goes to the other room but regrets the decision afterward. Soon after, Yuan joins Heiai in the other room, wearing her night clothes. He sits next to him and informs him about her mother who will be coming home late. The cultured guy starts having all kinds of questionable ideas in his mind. However, a call from Zidong saves him. She asks him about the amusement park date this Sunday and he gladly accepts. Yuan hears the conversation and asks him to take the kids to the same amusement park this Sunday as well. The weirdo accepts both the offer and plans to enjoy the date twice with different girls. After agreeing to go out with Yuan as well, he calls Zidong to cancel their plan but remembers what a lonely life she has lived. He chickens out and ends up agreeing to both plans. He had promised to meet Zidong at 10 a.m. In order to make both dates a success, he arrives at the location with Yuan at 9 a.m. to enjoy himself with the kids. They decide to ride the Ferris wheel and the wimp gets so scared that he ends up holding the legs of another lady. After riding a few more rides and throwing up like a disgusting freak, Tata arrives and gives him some chocolates to eat. Heiai, who has a bad experience with chocolates, declines her gift. He realizes that it's almost 10 a.m. and it's time for his date with the other girl. He abandons his kids and runs towards Zidong like a desperate loser. After taking a few shortcuts, he eventually reaches the meetup location on time and finds out that Zidong is already waiting for him, wearing a pink dress as usual. 
After meeting up, he apologizes for arriving a little late but Zidong, being the nice girl, blames herself for arriving early. Suddenly, the mood changes and Zidong tells Hayaya that she needs to tell him something important. He thinks that he might be confessing to him but dismisses the thought after looking at his own face. Their moment is interrupted by a guy who asks to take a picture of them. Both of them looked like soldiers posting for a photo. Fortunately, the camera guy helps them get a little closer for the picture. The other guy thinks of them as couples and Zidong takes this opportunity and hugs the loner, making his heart almost pop out. Zidong's hat flies away but Heiai catches it at the right time. Zidong shows gratitude by giving him a kiss. The spineless guy couldn't handle the situation and ran to the bathroom. Tata arrives at the bathroom and tells him that Cupid Chocolate has nothing to do with it and Zidong's feelings are real. Before meeting up with the kids again, he chooses a present for them and runs into his old friend Zhengdong. He tells Heiai that Du Yu's is back from America and is after Zuli and asks him to look after her. Coincidentally, Xuan is present at the gift shop as well. He asks her for a favor while he leaves to meet up with Yuan and the kids. Zidong is sitting alone, thinking that the kiss might have upset the loser. Suddenly Xuan arrives and starts conversing with Zidong. She soon realizes that he was on a date with Zidong and plans to beat the crap out of him later. Ayai goes back to Yuan and the kids and brings a teddy bear for the kids. Unexpectedly, he finds Hong crying and realizes that they all are going through a tough time. As they don't have enough money to live a luxurious life, even the kids have learned how to show restraint. He makes up his mind and plans to get them some ice cream. Later, Heiai participates in a quiz contest that has ice cream coupons as a winning price. The nerd dominates all the other participants and ends up winning the game. Afterward, he takes all three of them to an ice cream shop and buys them all some ice cream. Yuan thanks him for always doing his best for her and the kids like riding the ferris wheel even though he is scared or trying hard in a contest to buy them some ice cream. Yuan seems happy with his personality and compares him with someone else. Heiai, even though he couldn't make up his mind, ends up asking a question which makes Yuan tear up. Xuan and Zidong are still hanging out with each other. Xuan asks Zidong to smile more, and she tries her best, but the smile quickly fades away when they witness Heiai hanging out with Yuan. The chicken boy gets kidnapped and tied up in the bathroom. Xuan beats him and tries to make him spit out the truth. In reality, the question he previously asked Yuan that ended up making her cry was regarding her father. He wanted to ask the reason why her father doesn't help with the bills or provide any financial support. However, this question made her cry and he decided to never touch the topic again. The pathetic wimp told this story to Xuan and Zidong and they realized that he was telling the truth. They both decided to let him go and forgive him. Xuan asks Zidong if they both were on a date and Zidong embarrassingly declines. Before going home, Heiai asks the same cameraman to take a family picture of them. The cameraman questions his fate after seeing an ugly guy with two different girls on the same day. Yuan tells him that she is not mad about his question but also warns him not to ask it in front of her mother. The next day, he decides to play detective and visits Yuan's elementary school. The guard stops the suspicious-looking boy, but Heiai runs into the school, eventually losing the old watchman. He steps into the faculty room and all the teachers start bullying him. The old guard also arrives but Heiai manages to get away. Luckily, he runs into a teacher and gets slapped by her for being degenerate. However, he realizes that she is Yuan's elementary school teacher. The teacher tells him all she knew about her father and how he decided to leave one day and never came back. After he left, Yuan used to wait for him every day, but he never returned, and she eventually stopped waiting. Heiai interrupts her sad story by looking like a creep and asking for her father's address. The teacher gives him a strange look for asking a man's address. He requested a lot, but she never gave him the address. Even though he is so close to learning about the truth, he has no way of knowing her father's address. His mind starts giving him dangerous ideas and he ultimately decides to break into a police station and steal her father's address from their database. The loser gets caught before he even tries to do anything shady. However, turns out, he isn't dumb enough to break into a police station. He actually has someone he knows and wants his help in digging out the information. He tells the policeman the information he needs. After being confused for a while as to how someone as ugly as him got a girlfriend, he agrees. Unexpectedly, Yuan's father doesn't even exist in the database. There is a high chance that he lives abroad. Heiai leaves and asks the policeman to tell him whatever he finds out. As soon as he walks home, he realizes that his parents look absolutely devastated. Thinking that there might be some mafia boss after them, he tries calling the police. But the danger is revealed, and it is actually his childhood friend Zuli. She takes him into his room and tries to do questionable acts with him. 
However, Hei, who already has eyes on three other girls, decides to stick to his game plan and locks himself in the bathroom until Zuli falls asleep. Even after Zuli falls asleep, he stays awake and enjoys the sight of a girl visiting his room for the first time. The next day at school, Zuli reveals the things they did last night and Hei ends up receiving a beating from the loners. Luckily, the policeman gave him a few numbers which might belong to Yuan's father. He calls every single number one by one and gets scolded each time, until he tries the last number, which seems to be the correct one. He tries calling the number once more and this time Yuan's father picks up the call. Her father doesn't want to talk about his past and eventually cuts the call after informing him that he is not Yuan's real father. Heiai is stunned and decides to get more answers from Yuan herself. He visits her apartment only to witness her leaving the home in distress while her mom tells her not to ask about his dad. Not knowing how to read the room, Heiai asks Yuan's mom for a private talk. He tells her that he wants to know more about her husband, but she shuts him out and leaves. Luckily, the old lady next door has great eavesdropping skills and offers to tell Heiai the whole story. Turns out, Yoon's mother and her father, who was apparently a security forces officer going to get legally married. As soon as they were about to sign the papers, a colleague appeared and told her husband that a tragedy had occurred, and he was needed. Yuan's mother was already pregnant with Yuan and was expecting a happy life ahead. Sadly, her soon-to-be husband met his demise that day, and she was devastated. However, another guy took advantage of the situation and rizzed her up. They both decided to get married, but he didn't realize that his parents were kind of jerks and told him never to return home until he divorced Yuan's mother. He, being a mama boy, left her and went to live with his parents. Back to the present, Heiai gets angry at his stepfather for abandoning them. According to Hayai, he should have never married her if he didn't want to see it through. He got pissed at him and went home. His parents noticed the change in his behavior but thought of him getting rejected by another girl. After a while of messing up his room like a little child, he realizes that it's still too soon to give up and he needs to help Yuan. Tata, who is watching his mental breakdown, praises the idiot for keeping it together. The next day, he calls her father again and tries to persuade him to come back but he ends up cutting his call. Meanwhile, Zidong is at the cafe where Xuan works. She keeps on ordering a ton of stuff and asks for Xuan to listen to her problems. Xuan, however, leaves after telling her to piss off. Heiai keeps on disturbing Yuan's father like a persistent jerk. Later, he realizes that no other girls are falling for him and thinks that the Cupid Chocolate's magic might have dissipated. Tata shatters his hope and tells him that it is because he already has a lot on his plate, and it will come to him once he gets done with his current problems. This gives him the idea to keep things as they are so no other girls bother him. Afterward, he remembers that he needs to visit the painting scenery with Yuan and the kids. He meets up with them at the school gate and as soon as they are about to leave, Truck Kun arrives, having its eyes set on Yuan. Zidong is traveling to his old family house with her father. Her father seems concerned as he knows that her grandfather is somewhat of a jerk, but she comforts him saying that she will be okay as soon as her father stays by her side. Suddenly, her phone rang, giving her the bad news. Yuan's father receives a call from Heiai telling him that Yuan got into an accident. He further warns him that if he doesn't visit her this time, she might end up visiting an ice sky world for good. Her father panicked and instantly booked a flight to go visit her daughter. Xuan and Zidong are waiting outside the operation room, hoping for the best outcome. Soon, Yuan's father arrives at the hospital and asks to see her daughter. After failing to give the receptionist the correct name, he ditches her and runs towards her room. After reaching the room he finds out that the loser Heiai is the one who got into an accident after he pushed Yuan away, and his daughter was alright. He hugs his daughter and regrets everything he's done till now. Heiai is resting in his hospital bed and suddenly experiences a flash of memory. Inside the memory, he realizes that the wishes of all three girls have been fulfilled and he might be losing his so-called kids with whom he was having the time of his life. After waking up from the dream, he observes that all three girls are still present and by his side. This makes him realize that even after the magic has lifted, the memories and time he spent together with the girls stay on. As soon as he is discharged from the hospital, all three of them come to greet him but he ends up getting kidnapped by his creep childhood friend. After some time, Tata acknowledges that Heiai has fulfilled their wishes and might be able to live a normal life now. However, that's not the case for the cultured boy. Another girl comes running and shouting at Heiai for being a lifeless jerk. That's it for today my fellow men of culture. Like and subscribe to the channel for more plot-filled recaps.